Good evening, everyone. Um, my name's Harry Bruce. I'm the Dean of the Information School. Um, and uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming out this evening to the 17th Spencer G. Shaw Lecture at the University of Washington for a special Black History Month instalment of this annual lecture series. This lecture is being presented by the Information School and by the University of Washington Alumni Association. And before we begin, I've got just a couple of housekeeping items that I want to mention to you. The first is that University of Washington Television is going to be uh, filming this evening. So if you would turn off those cell phones and Blackberries, if you've got those on. Yes, I managed to turn mine off as I was walking across Red Square. I thought, oh, I'm going to be out here telling you to turn yours off and mine will start ringing. <coughs> And uh, you might like to sit up straight and uh, comb your hair. You're going to be on the telly tonight, after all. Um, and at the end of Patricia's presentation this evening, uh, we're going to have some questions and answering session. And you see microphones uh, on the stairways there. If you have a question, if you could make your way to the microphone so that we can get your question on the audio uh, for this uh, television program, that would be really helpful as well. So let's begin. This is a very special evening tonight. Through this lecture we celebrate services to children through libraries, schools, storytelling and literacy. A special thanks to our external sponsors for this event, Random House and Scholastic. Our internal sponsors include the Information School, Spencer Shaw Lecture Fund and the University of Washington Alumni Association. And thanks to, also to the Office of Minority Affairs, the College of Arts and Sciences, Social Sciences Division, and the University of Washington Friends of the Library for helping us make this year's event, um, I believe, a great success. On behalf of the Information School, I couldn't be more than pleased to introduce you to a man whose contributions to this field are respected throughout the world. Spencer G. Shaw is a Professor Emeritus at the Information School. Upon his retirement, in 1986, that's a good long time ago that you've been retired, Spencer. <laughs> the school inaugurated the Spencer Shaw Lecture honouring Spencer and the iSchool's dedication to children's and youth services librarianship and literature. While Professor Shaw now lives in Connecticut, he continues to enhance our community by connecting us with distinguished authors and illustrators like Maurice Sendak, and Lawrence Yep and Ashley Bryan and Catherine Patterson and Jerry Pinckney, Walter Dean Myers and this year Patricia McKissick. And I had the great pleasure of, uh, of joining Patricia and, uh, and Spencer for dinner this evening so I already have a, a, uh, an idea of uh, how wonderful this evening is going to be for all of you. In a professional career spanning now more than seven decades Spencer Shaw has served in public libraries as a branch manager, program and storytelling specialist and consultant in library services to children. He taught here at the Information School from 1970 to 1986. He has taught and been a major speaker in schools, colleges and universities, library, educational and allied organisations all over the world. He has publications in books and journals, He's given radio presentations and television presentations, and he has narrated films. Spencer has been called lots of things. I've been called lots of things, but not these sorts of things. <laughs> He's been called eminent American by the Australian American Council. And he's been called an American cultural specialist by the United States Information Services and ALA called him a leader among librarians and educators, an authentic and forthright spokesperson for children and youth librarians in the state of Washington and the nation. Spencer currently serves on the board of directors for the Connecticut Storytelling Center of Connecticut College. Last year, he wrote the foreword to a book by Emily S. Chase called Telling Tales published in September 2009. Spencer's forward is called Bridging Traditional and Technical Communication Networks. He has many awards and honours. In fact, there are far too many for me to list here, but I'll include a, a, a few of them. Black History Community Services Award, a Lifetime Achievement Award for his dedication to librarianship, Distinguished Alumnus Awards from Hampton University and the University of Wisconsin. Entries in Who's Who in Library and Information Science and Who's Who Among Black Librarians. A President's Award from the Washington Library Association. The Nancy Blakenshop Pryor Award 
from the Washington State Commission for the Humanities and the Washington State Library, which states, Mr. Shaw is honoured for his contribution in bringing to light ethnic and multicultural children's literature for the benefit of the people of Washington and for the enrichment of the literary heritage of our state. Spencer Shaw is a nationally and internationally known librarian, storyteller, folklorist, promoter of multicultural literature for children and young adults, consultant and much, much beloved Professor Emeritus who has travelled all the way to be here with us tonight from his home in Connecticut. So please, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to the podium a man who many of you already know and love, Dr. Spencer G. Shaw, Professor Emeritus. Good evening. Good evening. It's a pleasure to welcome to the University of Washington our distinguished guest, Patricia McKissick, a recognized authority in the fields of literature for youth and carefully crafted explorations into the African American rich history, its vibrant culture, and invaluable social insights with varying effects upon African American experiences. I divided this introduction into three parts. Patricia McKissick's childhood memories. A native of Nashville, Tennessee, our speaker has fond memories of her childhood where she learned the art of listening as she responded to the oral art of storytelling by her parents, her grandparents, her relatives and friends. And for, from such remembrances, she states, and I quote, we used to sit, porch sit a lot in the South, and people would see you and stop by and have a word or two, and sometimes it would evolve into a story. Do you remember when? Girl, do you know what happened to? And that would lead to a story. Although we children were not allowed to participate in adult conversation when it was story time, we were welcomed into the circle of adults. That was when always a special time when the whole family was invited to telling stories. From this enriching background of storytelling, Patricia grew up with a love of narrative and a love of reading. Patricia McKissick's young adult memories. In a tightly knit community where she lived, there also resided a young man Frederick McKissick, of whom she remarked, he was five, old, five years older, and you just don't dare date boys who were five years older <laughs> than you. When I was 15 and he was 20, it would just have been forbidden. After completing his tour of duty as Marine, Frederick returned to Nashville where both she and Frederick attended Tennessee State University. And in 1964, Patricia received her BS degree and later her MS degree from Webster University. After Patricia and Frederick were married, their friends commented, it wouldn't last six months. <laughs> <laughs> they said it was ridiculous and their parents were concerned too. But we just knew. We've always had a very close relationship from the first date with a 43-year marriage and a common love of literature, both love and respect and enjoy each other's company. 